hey everyone welcome back to my channel victoria here if it's your first time stopping by welcome so today is another glam with the word episode as you guys know we're currently doing a bible study of the book of proverbs today's video is going to be focusing on chapter four to eight guys so it's like four chapters today i know i said it would be three chapters every video but it's gonna go by fast thank you guys so much for the feedback on the first episode so we'll definitely keep this going throughout the month and yeah so let's just begin so we don't waste any time father lord we welcome you here um holy spirit i just ask that you have your way do what you do god um i pray that you just speak through me i just pray that you let this message reach who you want it to reach and i give you all the glory in jesus mighty name i pray amen so makeup wise today i'm thinking to do something peachy i don't know i've just been feeling like that peachy tone all right so proverbs chapter 4 a title i'll give is get wisdom at any cost that's what it has in my bible so verses 1 to 4 is um kind of like i'll say a message for both parents and children that's what i got from it it's saying that the children should listen to their parents' instructions. And then I also feel like it's also saying to parents that parents should also take the time out to teach their children, especially in um, verse 4. I believe that when children are able to understand the why behind when a parent tells them, oh, don't do this, explaining your experiences as to what you went through and stuff like that, I feel like it even creates a greater connection with the child. This is just me speaking from a perspective of a child just in case there are any parents that are watching we as children would really really love when we ask you why like you actually tell us why like not even you know just out of rudeness or anything but just to really understand like what's the reason behind you telling me not to do this thing and i feel like it's always a teachable moment children are more likely to take hold of the words with all their hearts and keep the commands of the parents if the parents actually teach them and explain to them why they shouldn't do something instead of just saying you know don't do it type of thing right so that's kind of what i picked up from those four verses so verses 18 to 19 i want to highlight a little bit it says the path of the righteous is like the morning sun shining ever brighter to the full light of day but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know what makes them stumble. So what is that really trying to say to us? It's anytime the Bible mentions light, it's referring to revelation. So wisdom illuminates the path before us. It brings light and gives us revelation. And when you have revelation for the path before you, you know where to go. You know what decision to make, right? And you make the right decisions, right? Because that path before you is illuminated. You're not walking in darkness verse 19 but the way of the wicked is like deep darkness um, they do not know what makes them stumble think about when the room is dark right you are more likely to bump into things and make mistakes or trip over something right so then we're gonna look at verse is 20 to 22 it says my son pay attention to what I say turn your ear to my words do not let them out of your sight keep them within your heart for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. So you see how it mentions the different parts of the body to incline our whole bodies um, to the wisdom of God and to honoring God. The Bible also says that our bodies should be a living sacrifice to God. So our entire beings should be submitted to God's um, direction and will. Above all else, guard your heart for everything that you do flows from it. The heart biblically it represents the desires that move a person. Um, guard your heart. Put a boundary around your heart. Don't. It's not everything and anything that you let into your heart or anyone that you let into your heart, right? Because literally whatever happens to the state of your heart affects your whole body. It affects your mind, your will. It affects your emotions. It affects how you take actions to things, how you think. Um, so do not just open it up to anything or anyone. There's a lot going on, especially on the internet and stuff like that, that you, you really have to be careful, like the things that you open yourself up to, even by accident, because um, in the realm of the spirit, like even if you do something by accident, once you give access to, you know, whatever spirit is behind something, it has that access. And like, unless you take the time out to, you know, like um, denounce and cleanse yourself and do all that and, you know, pray and all that. 
it already has access into your life. I feel like these verses are very self-explanatory, which is why I'm kind of going through them pretty quickly. Anyone that I feel like is a bit more like deeper, I will go more in depth into it. But like so far, I feel like it's very self-explanatory. Okay, so verse 25 to 27. Um, I wrote down in my notes, focus, focus on the assignments, on the vision, on the calling. Um, that's before you it's so easy to start to compare our lives or our assignments or our callings to, to those of other people because your assignment is different from every from the next person's assignments and if you remember like the word of god says that each of us in the body of christ we all play a role and if one person or one part of the body decides to do what the other part is doing then it leaves something void right and then something is missing and it causes a malfunction right so just think of yourself as i'm a member or a part of the body of christ and i have a role to play and my role is very unique but you need to stay focused on the assignment on the vision that god has given you and if you're in a place where you feel like you're not really sure what the vision is for your life ask god like literally take time out silence all the noise around you no social media any distraction and really really seek god's face see god like what am i here on earth for because we all have a purpose like ask him lord what's my assignment in your in your kingdom what am i supposed to do what do you need me to do who do you need me to be yeah so that is the end of chapter four like i said it's super short so we're going to move on to chapter five chapter five it focuses a lot on adultery and just sexual immorality and um yeah so we're going to be diving into that okay so verses three to six of chapter five wisdom is encouraging us not to fall for deception the deception of the enemy we're definitely going to be tempted especially as young people it's really and truly a natural thing for you to have sexual thoughts sexual desires it's very natural um and if you don't have sexual thoughts or desires then you should probably go and see a doctor <laughs> or something <laughs> but like it's very natural however um we have to take control over those thoughts and over those feelings don't allow it have control over you when we have the wisdom and the fear of god in us there are just certain things that you know if i fall for this temptation or if i do this immoral act it's going to be disrespectful to god and i fear god too much and i honor god too much to disrespect him like this right so think about joseph right when he was in potiphar's house if he really wanted to have a relationship with potiphar's wife he could have done so and you know it would have been like their little secret or whatever but pay attention to kind of like what he said he said it would be like dishonor and he can do this kind of wickedness to potiphar and 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 um god essentially right so he had the fear of god within him and, and he applied the wisdom of god that hey like I fear God and I respect God too much and I respect even my master Potiphar. I respect him too much to do something like this that would literally just um, destroy the relationship that I have with him. And even though, you know, like he still got put into prison, but his conscience was clear that he did not, you know, fall for that temptation. So then verses 9 to 14 kind of talks about the aftermath of infidelity and divorce if you really break down the verses the key points that it mentions there is loss of honor and dignity um so when you know somebody's like a husband or a wife when they're caught cheating right it's a very dishonorable act and it's, it's like embarrassing for the family members the partner involved like the children like it's just so messy um, and it, it, the person loses dignity in the eyes of their family members and, and you know, the, the community, right? Verse 10, it says, Let strangers feast on your wealth and your toil and reach the house of another. So think about this, right? Strangers feast on your wealth. Who are the strangers that would come and feast on your wealth? The lawyers and like any kind of judge and all these outside parties involved like when you're going through a divorce um or separation and stuff like that those are the strangers and they will feast on your wealth literally like the the, the payments that you have to pay for divorce lawyers and all of these people it's actually it's ridiculous right and so the bible is literally telling us let strangers come and feast on your wealth avoid 
avoid falling into this temptation in the first place so if we look at verse 11 it says at the end of your life you you will groan and when your when your flesh and body are spent so it mentions physical and emotional exhaustion because it's very exhausting going through the whole process of like a separation or a divorce um you know going through the custody battles just so many things involved that it can just drain a person emotionally and physically right so it says the body will be well spent so verse 12 to 14 kind of now says you will say how i hated discipline how my heart spawned correction i would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors and i was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of god's people so what does that mean there's a lot of regret and shame around the immoral act so all of these things can be avoided if we simply stay away from the strange man or the strange woman that is not our husband or wife right you will completely avoid any loss of dignity or honor or regret and shame and feasting of your wealth to strangers all of that right so verses 15 to 19 it talks about being faithful to your partner and your partner alone um, so it says, drink water from your own cistern, running water from your own well. So it's basically saying, be thirsty for your own wife, be thirsty for your own husband and your husband and wife alone. Nobody else, essentially. Right. So um, be faithful to your partner, and your partner alone so that you will be blessed and joyful. So there's a lot of choice that is involved in this. Choose your partner. Right. Don't let the world and just deception deceive you into thinking you know, there's something better outside. The grass is greener on the other side. Yeah, no. If you actually took the time out to work on your relationship with your partner, the grass can be green right there where you are. I'm, I'm, I'm not married, so you know, I can't really give marital advice to people. But me, I'm taking this into account. You know, for when I am married, because. I personally don't want to go through the process of divorce. God forbid. So that's all for chapter five. Yo, as you can see, it's going fast. Me, on the other hand, with my makeup, I'm going very slow. Okay? So I'm going to try to speed it up a little bit. I'm going to quickly do my eyes and then we'll start chapter six. Okay? All right. So chapter six. So the topic for this chapter is warning, warnings against foolishness. Verses one to five was very interesting. You know, when I first read it, I was like, ah, I was, I was really like, okay, so is the Bible saying like we should not like, help or give a loan to somebody or like stuff like that? I didn't really understand it, but, you know, doing some more research, it's just basically talking about, you know, like, yes, putting up a security for somebody, but doing it wisely. If you're not in a position where the person you co-sign for, um, like if they default on a payment and then you're, you're now left to pay whatever debt it was that they had, if you're not in a position where you can comfortably afford to do that, then don't basically co-sign for that person, right? Like it's different when you're, you know, in a financial stable place where like, okay, if you sign for somebody and they decide to default, you can literally just pay it off and it, it wouldn't even affect you financially necessarily. It wouldn't put you in a place of, you know, like any kind of debt or anything like that, then that's fine. Owing a debt back in the day, like back in these times, was a very serious issue. So people could get like arrested, people could be sold as slaves because they were owing a debt, or um, their children would be sold into like to become slaves, right? To pay off the debt. Compared to now, that like debt is almost like a normal thing. Like every everybody has like student loan debts, everybody has credit card. Like it's almost like normal in society to have debt and you can even file for bankruptcy where like everything will just be cleared off your name right so it's like completely different now in terms of like the times however the principle behind it is is still very much applicable right so like if you're if you're someone that's struggling living paycheck to paycheck there's absolutely no reason why you should be signing off for somebody else's like co-signing for somebody else's loan if that makes sense right because you're not financially stable enough to be doing that yeah i hope that kind of makes sense so that's why i i believe like the emphasis on you know like go and free yourself from the debt and like you know make sure you don't like it's very like dramatized almost but just think of it in the terms of back in the day it was a very very serious thing to 
to have um, debt, essentially. Moving right along, verses 6 to 11, the Bible is telling us to look at the, look at um, ants, right? See the way they're very hardworking, they're very diligent workers, they're very disciplined as well. Um, put away any kind of procrastination, any distraction, any nonchalantness. This one was for me because the way I be getting distracted, like social media is goodness gracious. Like I literally have put my phone on this, do not disturb for me to get stuff done. But um, God is just telling us in, in these verses to work hard and don't be a sluggard, right? If we, as we read on in Proverbs, there's a, there's a proverb that talks about how a person that it compares a person that's lazy to a person that is a destroyer right so that's how serious god takes laziness because god is not a god is not lazy so he's like if i created you in my own image there's zero reason why you should be lazy like i created you to work you know like when he put adam in the in the garden of eden the first thing he told him to do was name this animal like he put him to work right so god made us for us to be diligent workers and so he's telling us, if you're lazy, don't be expecting to suddenly become a millionaire, right? That poverty is what is going <laughs> to give you a hug, um, essentially. So work hard and be dedicated to whatever it is that your hands find to do. All right, so verses 12 to 15, I'm going to quickly read it. It says, a troublemaker and a villain who goes about with a corrupt mouth, who winks maliciously with his eye, signals with his feet, and motions with his fingers who plots evil with deceit in his heart, and he always stirs up com- conflict. Therefore, disaster will overtake him in an, instant, in an instant. He will suddenly be destroyed without remedy. So once again, we see the mention of the different parts of the body. I believe this is connected to Romans 6.13, which reads, Do not offer any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness. So this person that they are describing in these verses, so you're seeing how he's using the different parts of his body for sin and not righteousness. Verse 15 says disaster will overtake him in an instant. All the evil that he has sown essentially is what he's going to reap. Right. So I just put on some lashes off camera. So we're going to move on to verses 16 to 19 where it talks about the seven deadly sins. Okay, so things that God hates. So the first one is haughty eyes or pride. The second one is a lying tongue, right? So many of us feel like lying is such a, oh, you know, I just told a little white lie, a little black lie or whatever. Like we don't take lying as serious as God takes it. Um, and I feel like that's even one thing I had to learn, like just even in joking, right? Because you just see it as a joke, but it's like a joke is a lie. The third one is hands that shed innocent blood. So like a murderer, right? A heart that devises wicked schemes. Number five, feet that are quick to rush into evil. A false witness who, who pours out lies. And then the seventh one is a person who stirs up conflict in the community. And I feel like that one is also very important to highlight too, because if you're someone who likes drama, like you like to stay up drama, you like to um, listen to the gossip, like you like to be, to watch the fight happen and stuff like that, you're basically someone who stirs up conflict within the community. And God is saying to us that he hates that, right? So let's not be that person. Let's repent from our ways. And um, yeah, in order for us to actually be people that fear God, um, remember I mentioned in the last video, we have to love what he loves and we have to hate what he hates. Last verses of chapter 6, verses 20 to 35, it, it talks about sexual immorality again. I wanted to focus a little bit on verse 22. It says, when you walk, they will guide you. When you sleep, they will watch over you. When you are awake, they will speak to you. Right, I thought that was powerful because it's just reminding us of how the word of God is alive. Right, it literally is able to speak to us. Right, that's why you know when even when we read the Bible and when we study and meditate on the word of God, when we're trying to make decisions, it is the word of God that will guide us. The wages of sin is death. So you may not necessarily die physically, but something will die after committing like the act of adultery, where 
like you know it's the breaking of a covenant in in the in the boundary of a marriage right something will die so it will either be the relationship between a wife and a husband dies or maybe the person is like oh my god i'll just give you guys an example like just i think of like three weeks ago our mayor of toronto had to resign because he had an affair with somebody and it all came out into the open and then he had to resign from his job so you can see how the act of adultery can literally bring like death like he has lost his job and his position because of adultery so verse 32 i found it so interesting so it says but a man who commits adultery has no sense whoever does so destroys himself that's what i'm saying like something will die literally um but yeah so that's what chapter six of proverbs is all about okay so i just put some foundation on it might look a little bit different like on the two sides i'm testing out two different foundations and i'll put like if you're interested in the review i can post that for you guys up here when it's available but yeah anyways chapter seven um this chapter i titled adulterous woman or man verses 1 to 27 which is basically the whole chapter <laughs> it emphasizes the importance of valuing wisdom and treasuring it as the apple of our eyes so it mentions that in verse 2 where it says keep my commands and you will live guard my teachings as the apple of your eye verse 5 says it says they will keep you from the adulterous woman or man um, from the wayward woman or man with his or her seductive words so what I wrote down in my notes was that immorality speaks, right? So it speaks to us. The words are seductive, right? So it's kind of enticing. It's tempting. It's like, mm, like it's, it's, it's giving like, like you start to have like imaginative and thoughts and fantasies and all that from like the words that are being spoken to you, right? And so we must push back with the word of God and the word of God has to be in our hearts. And I, I believe that's why it says to to um bind them on your fingers and write them on the tablets of your heart so basically these words of wisdom we're meant to use these words of wisdom words of the bible right words of god to push back on those lustful thoughts those lustful tempting words that are seductive from that immoral man or woman if you read psalm 119 verse 9 it says how can a young person stay pure and and then it answers by obeying the word of God. That verse is literally answering or kind of like explaining what this proverb is also saying. That it's the word of God that actually keeps us pure. It's the word of God that purifies and renews our mind. That those desires that, yes, they will come, but you will fight them with the word of God. You will say, you know, my temple is, a, is, is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So basically, do not let your feelings control you. The book of Proverbs opposes living by just feelings just like how when the devil came to tempt jesus after he had finished fasting it was the word of god that he used to fight back right every response was it is written it is written it is written right in the same way god is telling us use my word okay so that's kind of like what i picked up from chapter seven in the society that we live in today there's like sexual immorality immorality that is it's literally laced into every and every any and everything like to the point where is it, they're even advertising basically abusing children like it's not like a fashion statement it is always portrayed as fun and positive like sexual immoral acts if you watch like movies they make it seem like oh like it's a normal thing to just like have sex with your boyfriend just because and they try to normalize it like it's not a big deal but god is telling us like hey like um these things will literally lead to just a path of hurt, heartbreak, destruction, completely avoided. Chapter 8, I wrote down wisdom's call. In verse 2 and 3, it says, At the highest point along the way where the paths meet, she takes her stand. Beside the gates leading into the city, at the entrance, she cries aloud. So when I was thinking about this, I was like, highest point along the way where the paths meet, um, beside the gate leading into the city. I was like, this seems like just 
almost like crossroads, right? Where, p- points where you would have to make a decision of, am I going left or am I going right? So then I, 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 I kind of like reasoned and thought about it. I'm like, okay, like basically wisdom is trying to tell us that I'm crying out to you and I'm standing in the places where you would have to make a decision, right? And it's like, will you use my words and my leading to make your decision, right? On the path in which you should go. So we see in verses eight to nine that wisdom des- describes herself as being straight, as being right and being true. To somebody that has found knowledge and someone who's walking uprightly, they receive the wisdom of God and in their eyes, they receive it as truth. They receive it as being the right thing to do, right? So that's what wisdom is saying. She's saying that, um, to those who have understanding, to those who have found knowledge, the things that I speak, the things that I offer are seen as just, as seen as correct, as seen as truth, right? Verses 12, verses 12 talks about, it says, I, wisdom, I dwell together with prudence. I possess knowledge and discretion. And in the last episode um, of chapter, when we're reading chapter one of Proverbs, we explain what it means to be prudent, right? And so I wrote down in my notes, I said, we see the mention of prudence once again. So it puts aside any form of instant gratification and it encourages us to actually think critically, which is based upon logic and not just moving by emotion. I remember I mentioned like not too long ago that the book of Proverbs, not it doesn't, it opposes us walking by our feelings. Like it actually requires us to Think and process the actions that we take. Verse 13, we see it mentions the fear of the Lord once again. So our sin nature, it naturally draws us to evil because of the flesh nature that we we um you know we have and we live in a fallen world. So we're drawn naturally to evil. That's why um you know we must build our spirit man so that way it suppresses the flesh and it suppresses the desires of the flesh. That way we might that way we desire things of the spirit. This verse is saying to fear the Lord and hate evil. Alright, guys, so verses 22 to 31. We see here wisdom is also talking about how it was first formed before even the foundations of the earth were laid. So verse 30 says, Then I was constantly at his side. His side is like God's side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind um and i just think i don't know i just find that verse so like cute and sweet if we look at the complexities of just how our body works like you can see how the wisdom of god was really applied into the forming of the human body like the cells if you look at how just just different things like it just makes sense like the body just makes sense that you cannot simply explain the formation of human beings just by the big bang or like microorganisms finding their way together and making us like there's just too many things that are just so intricate that there's no way it was just like you know by accident that all of it happened or we came from a monkey or something silly like that you know what i mean like i think we science needs to stop disrespecting god because no but yeah so that is chapter four to eight yeah let me just do the rest of my makeup and my hair and i will come back to close out the video okay yeah i hope you guys found it insightful like i said please do please 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 do read the chapters um prior to watching the video so at least you kind of like can follow along and we can exchange notes it's it's a lot more fun that way yeah so father lord we just thank you for another time in your presence we pray oh god that we're not only hearers of your word that we are doers of your word i pray that we're able to apply the wisdom that we have gained and the understanding that we have gained today lord i pray that we walk even on our relationship with you in just acquiring this wisdom lord help us father god to just do better and to walk in your ways lord and it's in jesus name i pray amen so yeah guys i will see you all in my next video so stay tuned and make sure you read your bible tonight and go back and study the notes okay bye guys mm-hmm.